There's a rumor out there that Harry really misses England and being in the military. Is this true or false? You have to bear in mind that because we've gone through a global pandemic at the moment, this global crisis, there is nothing that can make you feel further from home than something like that. Harry and Meghan definitely have changed their roles within the royal family. They've stepped back from royal duties and are living a more independent life. But Los Angeles is a long way away from London. And no matter what's happened in your past, it can make you feel very, very isolated at a time like this. You know, we know that we see it with celebrities, we see it with royals, that they're spending a lot of time, time as families. And for Harry and Meghan, I'm sure that they're obviously in Los Angeles and near Meghan's mum, but being away from the family that he has grown up with and been very, very close to and always come together in times of crisis, it must be very, very difficult for him right now. But in terms of him and Will, um, is it true that they're still not on great terms? Harry and William, of course, have gone through that ups and downs like any brothers have done. And they've both, you know, Harry's spoken about how difficult it can be. They're two boys that are on different paths. I should say two men, but they're on different paths. They have different futures. But Prince Charles had coronavirus, as we know, and there's nothing like bringing brothers together and siblings together when a parent is sick. So look, there are two people who have gone through their ups and downs, definitely more downs recently with Harry's decision to leave the royal family. But there's no way that these two are not going to be speaking from time to time and trying to have a cordial and hopefully amicable relationship. They are destined to be together. They do have, um, in some ways, while they're their fates are different. They also have a common thread. Only each other knows what it's like to be the son of Princess Diana and to have the kind of futures that they have. So they are going to be speaking from time to time. They're just not as close as they used to be. And that's okay. That's very normal when people get their own families. And then while Harry is now in LA, there's talks that him and Meghan are hoping to be the neighbors of Tom Hanks, Ben Affleck and other people in the uh, Hollywood realm. There are lots of rumors as far as where Harry and Meghan may end up when it comes to Los Angeles. Of course, there's lots of beautiful neighborhoods and lots of places that they can be where they can have privacy, lots of gated communities and so forth. Yes, Leonardo DiCaprio, Ben Affleck, Tom Hanks, people like that live in those kind of neighborhoods. As far as where Harry and Meghan are actually going to end up, whether it's Malibu, Pacific Palisades, Brentwood, we will just have to wait and see. There are rumors about every single neighborhood at the moment. So until they buy somewhere or rent somewhere more permanently, um, we will have to see. Finding Freedom is going to be a fascinating insight into Harry and Meghan and their life before they decided to leave as senior members of the royal family and what it's been like for them after. Now, the two journalists who have written this book, which comes out in August, both have been regulars on the Royal Rota for many, many years and really have insider knowledge of what it's been like for Harry and Meghan and why they took this very drastic decision. It promises to go behind the headlines to reveal some unknown details. What do you expect that those details will cover? I think it will be a lot of emotion, actually, just about um, really putting a, a personal um, light on Harry and Meghan and making this decision. You know, from the outside, for a lot of people, I think it's looked like Harry and Meghan are spoiled, that they're entitled, that they don't want to actually do the hard work that being in the royal family takes. But I think it really, some of the explanation that's been out there in the press hasn't taken into account that this is a young family with a young son and being in the limelight and being under the kind of pressures that being in the royal family um, put you under is not great and it can be very very harrowing and traumatic for people so I think this book is really going to be looking at that situation from like Harry as a dad, Harry as a husband, Meghan and her role, and of course Archie, and why this was the best decision for them. There, are, there is a lot of talk as far as whether Harry and Meghan have contributed to this book in some way, if they've like uh, uh, unofficially authorized it, somehow given information to the authors. What I will say is that that wouldn't be unheard of, right? We've had that with Princess Diana and Andrew Morton. We've also had it with other royal journalists who have 
written, let's say, a biography on Prince Charles. Like, they often have a little bit of access when they're writing these books. I think if I was Harry and Meghan, or one of the writers of this book, I would really look at the most scandalous headlines and want to really, like, paint a picture of what it was actually like for them. So I do think it's going to be in a lot of detail. I think there's going to be a lot of revelations in the book because we have barely heard from Harry and Meghan and what really happened. All we've had are press releases and obviously they used to be on social media. They're not so much anymore. So I think it will be have tons of details and I think it will go behind the biggest headlines that we've had about Harry and Meghan. As far as whether this book is going to be damaging towards their relationship with the royal family. That's interesting. It depends how much, if at all, they cooperated with this book because the title in itself, Finding Freedom, if I was in the royal family, I would be offended by that. I would say, hold on, I wasn't holding you a prisoner before. Like, how can you make it seem like you were imprisoned, hence you had to find freedom? So I'd be upset with just that. You know, the thing about the royal family and why they're so successful over the centuries is, is because there is an element of mystery. We only know a little bit about them, whatever it is that they choose to reveal. Books like this do um, run the danger of, of causing cracks within the royal family, of really taking away that mystery of the monarchy. And so we will see, but I don't think anyone can blame them for wanting to tell their side of the story if they haven't felt like they've been able to be honest before. Was Megan a diva on the set of Suits, true or false? There are so many rumors about whether Megan was a diva on the set of Suits, but as far as I'm aware, she was not a diva. I think what happened is as soon as she started dating a royal and Prince Harry, the most eligible bachelor in the royal family, people wanted, wanted it to seem like she had stolen him um, from out from under all of us. And so I think that's why all those rumors started. But as far as I'm aware, she was actually very, very professional. And as we know, she has a ton of friends from working on the show there. And I don't think that would have happened if she was a diva. Is it true that she was embarrassed by her feet? There is a new story out uh, that a man who photographed her says that she was embarrassed by her feet, but I don't think that this was any big deal and she had any weird like foot phobias or anything like that. I think what it comes down to is if somebody takes a picture of you and there's, you're like, oh gosh, I don't like that. I don't like my outfit in that or my hand looks weird. It's just one of those moments. So no, she has perfectly normal feet. <laughs> um, Megan versus Catherine. Megan shouted at a member of Kate's staff. Is this true or false? You know, there are lots of rumors as far as Megan and Kate's relationship and how well they got on, especially on the run up to Megan and Harry's wedding. I did hear a story at the time that Megan and Kate had had a little falling out, actually, when Charlotte was trying on bridesmaid dresses. But aside from that, you know, it's not like they had some big showdown and were never going to speak again. I think it really, I put it down to a bride just before her big day being extra nervous. And of course, Kate had only just given birth. And so she had all of her hormones racing around as well. This is very, very normal. It's valid. Um, and is it true that that rift between, or any perceived rift between Megan and Kate is the reason that they left Kensington? Absolutely not. The reason that Meghan and Harry left Kensington, there's a myriad reasons for that, but it's not to do with Meghan and Kate's relationship. You know, this is about a changing dynamic within a royal family, just like every family goes through that. So Meghan and Kate were not at the centre of any rift between Harry and William. All right. Is it true that Meghan hasn't spoken to her father in two years? There is truth to the fact that Meghan and her father, Thomas Markle, do not get on at the moment. And obviously we have this court case that's going on in the UK whereby Thomas Markle actually released a private letter that Meghan had sent him to the press. And it was very, very upsetting to her. Part of that letter was about Meghan talking to her dad about um, wanting her dad to be a father and not to be speaking to the press. But Thomas Markle has definitely taken his own um, initiative when it comes to his relationships um, outside of Meghan. So yes, Meghan and her dad are not getting on. And I'm not sure, very, very sadly, but that they ever will get on. It feels like this argument has gone too far.